Hey, welcome to Rich Baker and Friends. My name is Rich Baker, and I'm doing the intro before I cut to the video where uh, I interview, where I don't, it's more of a discussion with Shirley Wayness, because when she first got on the Zoom, her and I have such a good connection that we just started talking right away and uh, about 30 seconds in I realized oh this is the show so I hit record and I wasn't even gallery mode for a while um and uh, I just like rather than like hey okay let's stop talking so that I can do this intro I was like okay I'm just gonna do the intro later uh which I think uh, depending on the guest I might do that uh, more typically uh from now on so here is my uh time with Shirley Wayness she is uh, just an amazing person. She's had uh, a crazy, like, uh, a variety to her career. A lot of fun stuff. In this thing. You, uh, this looks like uh, like a shot that was set up by Stanley Cooper. Like, if I wanted to make you look, I don't know what what's. Yeah, just warm. There's a warmth to it. Yeah, it's, fa it's uh, fascinating. I missed my calling, didn't I? <laughs> you, uh, you have so many callings, though. That's the thing. I do way too many. Too many callings. I was like, what do you do when you're called constantly for everything? Right. <laughs> yes. Just... I, I, I. Uh, one time, I said to a friend, I said, "I'm an I used to person." They said, "What?" <laughs> and whenever there's conversation, I go, "Well, I used to do that." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you've done a lot of things. I uh, jack of all trades, master of like who knows what. Do you know that the quote "jack of all trades, master of none" is not the full quote? What is it? Please tell me. Jack of all trades, master of none is better than, oftentimes better than being a master of one. I think I'm going to agree with that. I love it. Thank you. And where did it come from? I don't know. Uh, I mean, I, I think I, it, this was in the book too, but uh, my friend wrote a book recently and, uh, and it, it came out and I've been reading it. And that's one of the things he talks about is he's like, right. I'm a jack of all trades. And right. he goes, a lot of people think that's a negative thing, but he's like, I, I see it as a positive thing. Cause the whole quote, right. like the thing that we're the source materials even saying like, it's probably a good thing. I think it is. I, I, I wouldn't trade all the various trades <laughs> I've had. Yeah. For in the world. It's been, it's been a good ride so far. Hell yeah. Um, and you're killing it. Like you're, I just, I don't know. I, I think every time I think of Shirley Wayne I think just crushing life. That's just. All right. All right. Make it look like I am anyway. Right? Well, you know, it's, it's a, you impress me. <laughs> I'll say that's, you impressed me. I'm going to get this in gallery view. Um, my God. But so the thing that uh, I think we, we talked about talking about today was one of the many, uh, uh, layers to your uh, right. rich past is that you were you worked for sony yes i pictures, did right yes. and that uh in in not in the behind the camera but even like not even necessarily well you just you tell me what did you do for sony um my title was administrator of worldwide sales servicing which tells you absolutely nothing of what <laughs> I sounds super corporate i played with the big kids i sat in the thalberg building um, but what I did actually was I was in charge of creating all of the masters post theatrical release for the ancillary markets, which as you know, means delivering to TV airlines, hotels. And this was at a time when we were still on tape. Uh, oh, wow. Was, was I didn't digital. actually know what, what you meant. So thank you for explaining. Yeah, so I had to, I mean, there's so many versions. When a movie was still in production, I was looking at it and, and comparing it to all of the contracts where we sold worldwide to every market and trying to figure out every language we needed, every uh, format, all the edited versions that was going to require. And so that film had to instantly go into that area. And I, like, orchestrated all of that so i had to yeah and i had i was coordinating with our you know japan and all the foreign offices and all of the wow. satellite offices of sony to find out did you create a track can i get a track do i have to make a track and let's edit it for tv let's edit it for airlines and hotels and blah 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 blah, blah. Wow. and ultimately that was my job which meant i had one film had probably up to 30 master elements that I had to create Holy. the masters so then they could deliver it to the uh, the actual um, 
person that bought it. Wow. So, but, but you were like, to me, that sounds almost like tedious and like very office-y kind of stuff. But like, you were also like on set and all, all that kind of stuff too, right? Right. I came from, I had a very, very strong production background. That's mm. why I got the position because I had um, started out at a small independent company where I learned how to make a movie yeah. and from pre-production through post, through delivery actually. So uh, I had to have a lot of post-production knowledge. Yeah. And um, it was hands-on. I actually, at one time in the 80s, was uh, editing on a moviola flatbed. Wow. And like with a reel-to-reel kind of stuff? Yeah, a flatbed where you roll it and you're splicing with gloves on and and lining it up and and making cuts. And I did a lot of, I did the audio uh, tracks for a lot of the projects that we had. So I had to take, uh, we used a Nagra, which... in audio, that's a that was a professional piece of equipment okay. that was all the audio was uh, for any mo- movie. That's what they used. Okay, and you had to take the the track and sync it to the film. It wasn't wow. done automatically. It did not have. There was no sound on film. You had to match it up. So anyway, uh, then I went from after that. It was quite interesting. I actually have kind of an interesting um, feather in my cap. I, yeah, as please, were. please, please. Um, way back when we were doing film, I, I was, uh, uh, I don't know, an associate producer, I guess, at the time on a uh, documentary series. And we had talked to this place called CFI, Consolidated Film Industries, about, you know, posting everything on digitally and it was still very new technology so um i actually did a test we were a test market and i was the one that did all of the work on this off offline edit bay which was three quarter inch and i was writing all the programming to a three inch disc so we could like a lot of work (laughs) it was Wow. And, and it was interesting because it was brand new. It was a brand new technology. And just the idea that, you know, um, uh, Photochem Phototronics was a brand new company then that you could take film and go to tape because wow. there's a difference in the number of film frames per second. And they, oh, okay. they came up with a technology where they could transfer film to actual tape. And then ultimately later on, as we know, we are all, I don't know where it is. Where does everything live anymore? I think it's all in our imaginations. I don't think there's, I think when someone says they have a, a movie finished, like, like I, don't, I think, I don't think it's real. I think we all just agree. And that the power of our mind just makes it. It's out there. It's just out there living in a, a, a living in a, in a tiny a, a, a thing, the size of a pinhead. Yeah. An and, assemblage of numbers. Yeah. And so then we went to DVD and uh, it was, it was, it's been an, it's been a really interesting ride on the, uh, the technology side, but the creative side has been even way more fun. So I've been lucky to wear every hat nice. and work with a lot of people. So it's, uh, so tell, tell me about, uh, what like a set you were on or, or something like, I know crazy stuff happens on movie sets and that kind of thing or TV sets all the time. Like, What's some, what's some stuff that happened that uh, it's worth talking about? Well, um, a lot. I mean, I guess there's a lot. I worked with Sweet. a lot of people. I mean, there's secrets out there. Like I worked with James Coburn on a, nice. a documentary series. And it was, it was, there was every day there was something fun and funny happening. And um, he actually had a great sense of humor. So he was always, you know, playing jokes on people and doing interesting, funny things. And he was a very serious actor. And, uh, uh, but, uh, but like when he, when he wasn't acting, he was just like kind of a goofball. Yeah. He was kind of a stoner. <laughs> oh my God. I love that. Um, <laughs> he wasn't that way back when. Cause you know, for, for me, like James Coburn, uh, I, you know, I don't know most of the early stuff, but like his career when I was watching a lot of movies right. was very bad guy oriented. You know, mm-hmm. he played very like, you know, snake like just sneering and that kind of yeah. thing. So I love hearing that he's, you know, just some like he stoner prankster guy. 
he was the opposite and he was very metaphysical and very spiritual and very just kind of out there actually we we actually had to get him some of his goods while we were <laughs> one of the jobs of one of the production assistants was to make sure they got him the stuff he needed to get gotcha. through the day <laughs> oh, well 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 there yeah yeah so yeah it, and we all have our uh poison right sure 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 <laughs> so uh, he was a lot of fun and um I, I i guess if i were to name us a a, a a story that i think is dear to me and yeah, maybe not funny is that um i did we did a film that i was involved in at gaylord productions who of all things owned hee-haw oh. but we made a lot of money so we could do some interesting films and uh, um, we did this movie that was women. It was, it was like had a lot of, it had a, a strong feminine uh, control in it. It was, mm -hmm. women were not very uh, well represented in the upper levels of filmmaking or, gotcha. or in any executive positions. I mean, they could all be like directors, but nobody was presidents. Hmm. Except for John Steele at, at uh, Columbia, which wasn't even then at that time. Hmm. So um, we did this film that was about a woman, and it was played by uh, Marlo Thomas. And directed, that's the thing, was one of the original uh, female directors was Lee Grant. I don't know if he is. She was also an actress. She did a lot of acting in the 1960s. Hmm. And she was... I mean, I adored her. And um, uh, anyway, long story short, the movie was awesome. It's called Nobody's Child, if anybody wants to try to find it. It was a movie of the week for TV, actually, but I think you can still find it somewhere. And we won every award available that year. Oh, wow. So many awards that it won Emmys, it won Directors Guild Awards, it won Writers Guild Awards, it, wow. it won every category. And one, uh, comp uh, one organization was brand new then. It was called the Luminous Women in Film. And it was brand spanking new that year. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Uh, one second. Gigi, come here, come here, come here. It's okay. I apologize. They're all good. There's somebody delivering something. So oh, yeah. And I, I, like, angered. There's somebody there. There's somebody there. No one's Look. allowed in my house. Get I in will the save you. I will save you. So she's good at that. Um, anyway, so uh, it, we, we won this award. And, and because everybody in the company was busy collecting them on the same weekend, I was given the charge of going to the director to Guild Theater and writing a speech and accepting an award for this film. Wow. And it was, to me, it was like my, it meant to me that I'd come, I, I made it. I wow. was like 30. And I, I walk up and this beautiful award is handed to me by Betty White and Ed Asner. Wow. And in the front row of the theater, it was the same year that uh, Out of Africa came out. So Sidney Pollack is sitting there. Wow. And I could drop names all day. I had to walk <laughs> down the red carpet. I had to dress up. And I don't even remember giving a speech. I was petrified. Of <laughs> sure, sure. I said to my date, um, if I, like, choke... Please go up and read this. My speech is in my purse. <laughs> that's, a, that's a lot of responsibility to be someone's arm candy. It was like, oh, I'm the backup? Is that okay? Yeah, he was. He was. I said, sorry, Rich, you're going to have to. His name was Rich, actually. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, he was a great guy, a boyfriend I had for a few years. But he was a wonderful human being. But I did it. Wow. I have no memory of speaking. That's amazing. Yeah, so I, I don't know if that's... No, I no, love I, that. I, so it was, it was, it was a movie of the week, like commissioned by like a you know a TV station to just yeah, hap play yeah. it one time on TV. Well, in the eighties, movies of the week were huge. It I was, vaguely, I remember them a little bit. 
Yeah, it was a big deal. CBS Movie of the Week this week is going to be made for TV movies. Was oh, okay. A genre, and it was a, and it was lucrative, for wow. especially uh, at the time it was an independent production company. Oh, nice. Uh, and we were still run then. There, there was a lot of independent production companies. First of all, hmm. second of all, the creative people ran it. Oh, that's nice. Oh, it was uh, my uh, my mentor. I I don't know if I told you this. I may have told you this before. Was a man named Elmo Williams. Oh, no, don't don't ring a bell. That that's a name I feel I'd remember. People, historians know it because uh -huh. he was Richard Zanuck's right hand for 20th Century Fox. Okay. He, also, he was the editor of a film called High Noon. Oh, sure. That's a big one. For which yeah. he won the Academy Award. Wow. All right. And he uh, was the producer, uh, like uh, Cleopatra, the movie, Ben Hur, uh, those. Uh, fabulous f flying men and their or, and around the world in 80 days. That was oh, it. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, he also did the bridge over river Kwai. Mm -hmm. Those are his. And, and he was my, he was this family guy, super creative and taught me everything, literally everything. So I was blessed that in that day and age, if you worked in film uh, and it's not been that long ago, you could actually, Get your hands on everything. Oh, nice. And know what it took. And I think that's what gave me uh, the skills to step into a big company like Sony and say, hey, I can do this. This is my credits. This is my, my uh, resume. And I, I know about everything there is to know about making a movie, selling it post-production, how to read contracts, all that. So it was, it was. You, uh, you made yourself a one-stop shop with skills that like for pretty much everything. Yeah. And I think I was, I was not alone in that. There was quite a few of us that that's how we learned. Wow. And, um, but then, you know, in walks the corporations and it kind of changed the face of, of entertainment. So it, it's been kind of sad in that, but I, I still believe that it's a good, uh, I still believe in entertainment. It's what keeps us all sane, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that we're going to see, this is just the things I've heard from others. I, I think that we're going to see a, a more trend toward smaller cottage industry type things, mm -hmm. not just in entertainment, but I think in, in a lot of businesses. I think the, the idea right. of just like the multi-conglomerate, huge corporations just being all there is in the marketplace, I think, I hope, I think it's going away. I hope so too. I, I, I like to see the real humanity aspect in, involved in everything we're seeing instead of focus groups and what's going to sell and, it, it, you know, having something based on sheer creativity and talent rather than what sells more um, dog food. Yeah. Which is kind of what it's turned into it's the it's this uh we get uh I, there was a wonderful show i worked on actually one year that got canceled because they didn't like the ratings and the ratings were awesome in today's standards that show would have never been canceled because they were looking for the biggest instantly yeah but, and i mean how many shows did that like not many shows like come no. out of the gate burning hot Unfortunately, what happened is this show did. It broke all oh, records. The I first see. week, it broke, it broke everything. All the records for ratings. The highest rated show ever at that which, time. Which show? What, what was the title? You're going to be surprised. And she doesn't even like talking about it. And I don't know why. It was uh, Dolly. And it was Dolly Parton. It was a TV oh. series that lasted one year in 1987. And I worked uh, as a, with the executive producer. And I was part of the production staff, as it were. And um, the show was a hit. It was an absolute hit. But every week, it, it changed. The, the ratings would go up and they'd go down. And then they started moving it all over the place. They would uh, put us in different time slots. And they figured, gee, we've got gold here, so we'll put the show in the worst time slot ever. 
to get mm. so we can get all the money and all the advertising dollars. Uh, so they, it was bad business on the um, on the distribution side. Yeah, and so we were a casualty, and it did last a year. It was great. I've got awesome memories being on that show because we it was a variety show, and it was trying. They were trying to revive the concept of the variety show, and oh, it nice. was. I, you know, I was, I think I was 60 years old at the time. I, as I don't remember it, but I don't even remember hearing about it. Um, huh. so that's, that's, uh, yeah, you'd, you'd think with, it's greed, right? That's the yes. problem is they go, yeah. oh, we've got this much. Let's try and make it this much. And you're like, right. or you could just be happy with this and let it grow or not grow organically. But yeah. hey, what do I know? What, what, what do I know? Well, you you well you do know something. I mean, uh, you take a show like Mash, you're all in the family. They were stinkers when they started. Yeah, very low ratings. But then, um, the, because creative people were in charge instead of corporate MBAs, which mm -hmm. if anybody out here is an MBA, I apologize for profiling you, but um, uh, you know, and and and. The creative people knew what it took. Yeah, it's like you don't create a painting, and and as the first time it's seen, everybody loves it. I mean, it's got to get some notoriety or fame. Or that's that's almost all art, right? It's it's repetition, yes. it's exposure, it's 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 you're you're growing. What you're doing is every time you experience a piece of art, whether it's like a movie right. trailer before you see the movie, or or an interview right. with the star, like you're you're growing a little bit of of a connection to it. And as that gets bigger, you get to experience the art in a way that's so much more fulfilling and better. Absolutely. Like you perform as a great improviser, by the way, yep. and you're very welcome. And you know, if you think about the very first show you ever did with your partner that you do a lot with, mm -hmm. and then you think about how you are now, mm -hmm. I think with shows like that, there's we have to build our characters, and, and the actors have to find where they are and what the, what the show is going to be, and let it let the let the art tell you where the direction it's going, right? Yeah, because I think a lot of people don't really get that. You know, when you're on a movie set, like it's cool, but it's still work. And oh. you know, when you show up to a new TV set and you've right. got like a new makeup person or a new producer, you know, you've yes. got all these new things like it's cool but it's also takes it's just like getting jumping into a new job like right. there's an adjustment period I, exactly so there was uh, with new writers coming in uh creative product producers we we had like five producers on the show i mean so, wow. and in other shows i did also the same thing and film i did you know like other movies also but um the best things i've seen start out slow and yeah. and then gain and i think we are and i don't mean to be negative but our society has has become an instant gratification oh sure uh society sure. we want it and we want it now and we want it quick and we want it right yeah so, and it's and it's a yin and yang thing, right? Because it's like the marketers find that they found that they could like market to the masses and make more money. So the masses were like, okay, we'll right. take it. You do your thing, and it just kept feeding itself. Exactly, exactly. So, and I'm I think I'm hoping now that we're seeing a lot of uh, the, you know the one good thing I think or not one one of the one of the good things about the internet and the ability now for everybody to do their own show. Yeah. Is that we are seeing some amazing creativity in the in the world. I mean, so many of us have got that this part of our brain that imagines things and has the, the ability to bring it to fruition. Yeah. And share it in whatever way that is. And right now we're seeing some awesome, you know, uh videos, YouTube, uh Whatever. Well, just, yeah, yeah. Any any kind of creations. And yeah. it's it's a it's a, a we're we we're, we're all telling a story, which we all have. Every single one of us has an interesting story. I think not a person. Oh, absolutely. And talent. So I think we've been told that oh, you have to be this to get out there, right? Well, right. Yeah. No, we don't. 
we don't anymore. Here we are in 2020 during a, a horrible virus, and we're seeing more talent show up than ever every day turning on this c computer like this. It's awesome, I think. Well, and I, you know, and, and, and speaking from someone who's, I mean, we're literally in a show talking about people who make their own shows. Exactly. <laughs> speaking as, as someone who's, who's been doing this, what I have found most fascinating, um, and I found that there's actually schools of thought about this too that I didn't even know, which is that artists, we like any creator, like one, everyone is creative. They may not tap into it ever, but everyone has the potential to be creative. Mm -hmm. And that for most of us, especially those of us who just crave creativity, like when we just make things because we like it, it's so much more satisfying to us. And it's, and regardless of how many people experience the art, right. it's going to be more satisfying to those who do. Yes. So I don't know how many people are going to watch this. Maybe, you know, thousands, maybe three. Uh, right. But like the people who do, who go, oh, I'm into this. They're going to be really into it because yeah. it's different. It is. And, and, and I think that it looks to me, uh, you correct me if I'm wrong. Like you, you as you said, if I can, paraphrase what you Please. just said it's like you're doing it for the sake of itself the you sake of word doing things it. so great <laughs> huh you word things so great <laughs> i got words I, I i know words you're i've good. been learning words for years <laughs> i use words <laughs> you word good I, surely I, word good i give good word <laughs> you give good word <laughs> i've been practicing a long time i appreciate it I appreciate being the recipient of good word. Yeah, except when I don't. <laughs> Hell yeah, sister. I hear that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> except when I don't. And, and I think that's, you know, that brings me around to that's why now in my life I'm in, um, I guess I'm in the golden years. I don't want to admit that, but I, I think I am actually. I, I'm spending time doing something I found a passion for. Which, which is improv there it is right like, improv uh, and, and it's to get anybody to feel good about watching me do something goofy what a gift right yeah and just uh so the, 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 we met I, I you took an improv class in second city i was your teacher and yeah. then uh and then I, you know, we stayed in touch and then you've just recently taken a second uh improv uh class at second city that i happen to be teaching as well and some private coaching and whatnot so like i've seen you improvise a lot uh you know i've been there and i've been like literally looking at it from the teacher's point of view and i mean i will say that you've absolutely grown um so i love that you just doing it because you love it but you're also you know getting better and better yeah and and who knows i mean i'm 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 open to whatever life brings me i would love to uh be in shows do what yeah. wherever it takes me i'm not putting a rule on it because I'm past that. If I was 30 years old, I might be viewing it differently. Right now, I'm doing it for the sake of doing it for Hell itself. Yeah. And if something great happens with it, I'm, I'm, I'm game. Hell yeah. Why not? Yeah, exactly. So, um, I didn't do an intro to this show because like we just like started talking like and connecting so because I knew we would because we we're friends but um yeah right away that I was like so uh just putting it out there I don't know how I'm gonna edit the beginning but uh there, yeah I know I know there was no intro I didn't care I was just like I'm not interrupting this flow uh <laughs> but that said like uh what what's like you know, you, we've talked about onset stuff, but as we said, you, you've done so many things, you've learned so many things. What's, uh, what's something, what is a piece of advice, some wisdom that you could impart on someone who wants to be in a position like you were in, you know, working for, in the entertainment industry, in, in the higher ups, in the offices, that kind of stuff? I think that I had a, a, a one goal in mind, no matter what I did, whatever mm -hmm. I did in any kind of paying or non paying. Uh, career there's always somebody that's just above you mm -hmm. no matter what you're doing make them look great okay all right all right and that worked for me in the sense that I threw myself into every every uh, position I got and then I thought this person everything I do has to make them shine wow 
be it an actor, be it the, um, the, 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 the director, or if I was directing, make somebody, whoever is above me or just uh, around me, make them shine. And I think that that's, I mean, that may not be what you are after. That's fine. I'm not after any, I'm after you. I'm after you, you just oh, sharing what you. you want. So that's if great. You, yeah. I mean, we're all just doing stuff, right? Yeah. We get up, you have a job. And you go and you learn what is to be done at this job or this career or this whatever. It could be being a painter or anything. What is it that I need to do? We kind of do it to the best of our ability and make the guy right there just like what you do as a teacher. You make us shine. Nice. Yeah. And, and, and be the best we can be. And that makes you a success. And I... I mean, in the corporate. <laughs> yes! yes. Yay! <laughs> I love you, Rich. I love you back, Shirley. Uh, do you have anything you want to plug or anything? Anything you want to steer people towards as far as uh, like links or you know works or anything like that? Um, I don't think I do. I I really think that um, you know to tell everybody follow your passion. Thanks. Anybody that's watching this, uh, uh, know that. Um, there's, oh, there's this really great book <laughs> that I just love. <laughs> it's called Improv Made Easier. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you for plugging my, that's been incredible. That's Thick. a great book. Look at you. Uh, uh, you were in a video recently. Uh, you mind if I put that, the garden, the, the, the Oh, food stuff? forward. Yeah. Yeah. That was kind of, that was really, it's something that's dirty my heart actually. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's called Food Forward is an organization that feeds the hungry throughout all over Los Angeles. They started out small. They've been in business like or, or around for like 10 years. Wow. And this man has, you know, what we do, what they do is like go to people that have fruit trees in their backyard or produce, extra produce, which everybody has. And there's volunteers that come and harvest it. Oh, wow. It goes directly to the hungry. Oh, that's great. I mean, directly. I got, they got 350 pounds of fruit from my backyard uh, last year. And it went down the street to a food bank for people that just couldn't afford fresh fruit. And, wow. and this is like the best quality. They also get uh, throwaways that can't be sold from the uh, uh, big industry now. And they've grown so much that they get uh, vegetables and fruits from farmer's markets. And they take it and it goes directly. They've got trucks. It's, anyway, it's called Food Forward. Wow. And if you go to their link, there is a video that I did a, a promo spot for them. And it was a lot of fun. and. Um, they chose me. Surprise. Yeah, and it looks great. I'll put a link to it uh, so people yeah. can see it. Uh, yeah. You just you you holding like fruit and baskets and stuff, and just being you know, it's great. I I, I talked about my life and and about what it meant to me. Um, yeah, that was well. Yeah, that part is it gets deep too. Like that. Uh, yeah. I don't want to even ask you about it because I feel like you did such a good job in that that if people really want to get to know you deep, they should watch this video and just hear yeah. you talk and stuff like because yeah. that's it's moving. It's moving. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not a lighthearted person. I, 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 I love entertainment and being funny, but I, I, shallowness doesn't fly with me. Nah. Yeah. We're, 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 we're pretty deep people and, and we, we are here to care about each other and, and our best. Hell yeah. Uh, Shirley Wayne, thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, this is always a pleasure to talk to you, and I'm just so glad that we, we now share you know, this interaction with, with other people, and I uh, just the best. It's mutual, my dear. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. I'll be back. <laughs>